One last thing before I sign off, and that is a, another useful thing that I used to do a lot and I like quite a lot for uh, speed test data is that I want to calculate what someone's top speed is. I work a lot with GPS and sometimes you want to know how close to their running top speed they get during a match. So to do that we need to do a little bit of mathematics and I've written it across to the right here so you can see what it is but basically a speed uh, calculation requires distance over time and then some sort of conversion depending on what units you want, meters per second or kilometers per hour. So in my case I want uh, kilometers per hour because that's how GPS data comes out as well and so I have to use the um, the distance that we're covering which is 20 meters divided by the speed that I got at the end of the 20 meter segment minus the speed at the beginning of the 20 meter segment the reason I'm choosing that is because theoretically that's when they're running their fastest the last 20 meters of a 40 meter sprint sometimes you might want to use between 30 and 50 meters if you've got athletes that take a bit longer to wind up but 20 and 40 are very commonly used so currently if I hit enter on that it's telling me a meters per second so I'm just going to put brackets all the way around the outside I'm going to times by 3.6 which will convert it into kilometers per hour there are a thousand meters in a kilometer and there are 3,600 seconds in an hour, so that's where you get the 3.6 from. Gives me 27 point, if I round it to one decimal place, 7 kilometers an hour. So I drag that down and we'll find a top speed for each athlete. And an average top speed and as you can see there's a little bit of a problem here because for one of the athletes we didn't get a 40 meter time time and gates can sometimes be a bit thicker when we didn't always uh, uh, have a hundred percent certainty so with a missing athlete you can uh, sometimes get a few problems here negative 20.7 what I've often found is uh, uh, just errors that pop up so uh, simplest way is just to delete it but what I find um, uh, a really useful way to deal with errors is if I put a function called if error in front of uh, formulas, it allows things to work a little bit better. So um, just to illustrate my point, I'm just going to take out the 20 meter time as well. If I've got an error in my column, when I do the average, it won't give me a value even though these other 10 or so values are, are, are legitimate numbers it won't give me a, an average because there's an error somewhere in the range so as this is an, an uncommon thing I often put if error around the outside so it doesn't change the result but as we copy this down you'll see what it does do is it takes that error out and it means that this 27.5 is an accurate average doesn't get affected by the fact that one of the values doesn't uh, doesn't come out right so we'll come across a fair quite a lot more when we go through some later videos but I really have uh, uh, become a, a big fan of it and I use it in a lot of my formulas particularly ones that involve average many formulas will be okay if there's an error in the range somewhere but the average won't, so uh, using it whenever there's an average is uh, my recommendation. Anyhow, thanks for stopping by. Uh, you can get these spreadsheets if you want to, drop me a line, um, and come back for more videos soon.